just make sure that I type in the word steak. Any one of the audience would like to just lend the free helping hand to make sure loud and clear. So, I will just get this going whilst I'm going to share through. Welcome to Round of Nine at the Circuit of the Americas for Hyperlet here for season number eight. Ninth round, what has been entertaining and eventful and dramatic championship as I'm sure you all would be able to agree. Last time out it was a bit of technical issues on my end, that didn't help but hopefully we did manage to get them fixed uh, come the end of that race so hopefully we'll be able to see the entire race this time. That would be a bonus if we could. Is that right, everybody? If we could all actually see the race and not have my game prioritise time trials over <coughs> what's it called? The actual race in action itself. It was a close win, a dramatic win, even. Uh, a fight between uh, one of the McLaren of Mantis, who ended up securing a well deserved win, and, and between strategic differences and just the way this goes so we we'll down in ninth. got a very good point of in second and Azure got a good drive to third climbing places on the grid the highest point during that race so that one we probably would go to um Pesky who did manage to climb six positions from last race this means then for the team two standings, it is still Kenzie Cool in the lead with a hundred seven points. Two Mercedes on the short track desert behind in the second and third. With Sam not too far off in the fourth place there. And Magnetic is in fifth for Williams and Mantis thanks to her has moved up into sixth place here at this wonderful map. So, with that said, there are no questions. For context, I will be able to see your chat this time. Um, the technical issues that plagued our viewing experience yesterday, I believe, have been eradicated. But if the quality of the stream starts getting a bit choppy, I do apologise. Go and blame Electronic Arts as service for me, please. Uh, they are dreadful. In terms of the tier 2 standings, then Mercedes are on top with a 300 points. A great achievement by the duo of Desert and Peach on fairness to them. Alpine are second, third with another Tempest Cookie. Uh, third is the Williams team of Athletic and Bear 57 Ned. Uh, there are 204 points. And then we've also got Haas in fourth uh, template by Williams. McLaren on 239 points and Aston Martin on 236. Round up the tier 2 standings. And as for the combined constructors, which merges both tier 1 and tier 2 results together, it is Mercedes currently on top with a grand total of 631 points. But there are a lot of strong contenders, including the McLaren, who are on 610. Red Bull on 516, Williams on 473, and Haas on 472. There's Aston Martin, Alpine, Ferrari, Alpha Tauri, and Alpha Romeo. A bit like real life where the two Alpha teams are at the bottom for now. And of course, it'll probably change knowing the excitement of this season ahead. So, with that said, my name is Mark. And I'll be guiding you through what will be, I'm sure, another uh, entertaining and enthralling race, it must be said. 
In fact, this is going to be, and I'm not just saying that because it's a generic thing I say just to keep you on the page and so professional. No, it's actually because Austin is an all compound race. So, this means the drivers will have to use multiple different tyre compounds if they do indeed want to get to the end of this Grand Prix alive. They can't just do a one stop and depending on the rules in particular, maybe not even a two stop. So, we'll see how the action develops as we go through this Grand Prix. Let's run you through the drivers that you can see on screen. We've got Kevin Nyland and Cody King in the Red Bull. I'm sure wanting to get a better result after the last time out. Azure and Harview hit the Ferrari. Desert 10 in the Mercedes. Uh, Tank was Cookie and Sam W11 remain at Alpine. Last race winner Mantis and Norton are in the McLaren. 8 Data uh, once again driving the Alfa Romeo. Uh, Aston Martin is led by championship leader Kenty Cool and RTM Titan did very well on their return with the house of Arma King of that stepping in due to uh, us needing a few more tier 2 drivers which you can do by if you click on our username at hyper underscore tier underscore racer and, uh, and if you scroll all the way over to the about page will find our discord server if you click on that that will take you to an invite link to join our community where you can all you have to do then is submit a couple of time trials and you too could be on the grid very soon uh we've then got emma payne and ghosty walls returning to partner up in the navy alpha tari and lastly the williams is sort of sold by Bennett. the williams it is going to be an enthralling race where all drivers must use the soft, the medium and the hard compound tyres around the circuit of the Americas track. For those of you who might be new here and just somehow walked into the stream, I'm not sure how it's on the here, but regardless, um, we have got a three compound race which means they must use all three dry tyre compounds. The red tyres you'll see on the cars are the soft which are basically the fastest overall in terms of one lap pace, lot more to grade the fastest, and are the tyres you will always see in Formula 123 in the time trial mode due to them having the most grip. You've then got the yellow banded tyre, which are known as the mediums in which each dri the driver will lose a little bit of pace but will gain a little bit more durability those tiles will be able to last longer and typically there's a nice comfortable balance and then you've got the hards which are the slowest of all but can last the longest into the race and some tracks being able to do virtually the entire race distance but Red Circuit of the Americas a track that is historic uh, for munching the tires for breakfast for lunch and for dinner and speaking of breakfast we're jumping into the first session of today's proceedings as it'll be a short qualifying session where each driver will have 18 minutes to set as many laps as they want around the circuit of the Americas to grab the all-important pole position for this all compounds race. I Hello, thank you so much to all six of you in attendance. Honestly, you are the real troopers being able to come here and again have a wonderful time with us and I hope you enjoy. I really, really hope you enjoy. If not, then at least I hope we could provide an informative and good piece to document some history on this video game itself. Right. If I hopefully this is also a test for me because I don't want the uh, footage to start glitching out, but so far it appears to be so good. So. If we quickly flick on to this and this. Right, uh, no driver has decided to make a move yet. It's probably because they're going to load in their setups. And uh, that is to be expected. Depending on the tyre allocation they have selected, I think the first one going out is an Alpha car. I think it is Ghostly World, who is the first to leave the pit lane so they get a little discussion about them first um, something. again we are so happy for every driver here and if i have a look at the results ghosty sadly did 
uh, DNF out of the last two races, but I'm sure today they'll be even more hungry for success as the last race they finished, which was back in Australia, they did successfully uh, get themselves a fantastic P7. So I'm sure they'll be looking to recreate that in the number 78 in a very nice half tower in the which I've got to say, I don't know about you all, but I started not really caring, but it has kind of grown on me. The next driver to leave the pit lane then is 8 Data, a loyal, a, a loyal patron of this league who came back out of Australia and finished in the place. And in the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, they were not able to attend, but I'm sure they'll be looking to bounce back uh, from surviving to thriving in the number 48 car. And lastly, from the little features, we've got Harville, who I believe is a reserve driver, or, oh, no they're not, I do take that back. They qualified on pole for the Chinese Grand Prix in this in round number 7 of our championship, but did take the fastest lap and, as, as consolation for sliding down to fifth sadly in the end. So let's jump on board then with I think we'll say Ghosty because they're the first one out on the circuit. I think oh wait what? Ferrari's gone ahead. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, and it looks like a data is on the soft compound, so let's see what how the can do. But a good climb up to turn one. Again it's an iconic corner that Beautiful rising crest, we come charging down the hill for a right hander, and then it is the knockoff Silverstone Maggots, Beckett's, and Chapel section here through sector one, and then it is a left hander followed by a right, and then a left up the hill, and then it's down the hill once more in a nice sort of straight with a little kink there on the left hand side. Breaking down now to the second, the first year of this hot lap, if we don't count the start finish straight, of course. And we're going to put the power down now, and that Ferrari really has opened as we get to see the Monza livery, which has been adorned on the Ferrari cars down temporarily for a specific time period. Hence, we're seeing a little bit more yellow than usual. Don't worry, your monitor's not glitching out, it is entirely part of the process. Then they're going to come through, there's a double right hander, and then it will flick into two left handers for Slight King, in a very tricky to master corner before, as Ghosty has sadly retired, as Harvey will roll round the three right handers, one, two, three, followed by a two left handers, with this one requiring a bit of braking to get right, using all the curb there on the outside, the Ferrari will run to the line, and it's provisional pole with a 133.9. It data there setting a 135.3. The next driver to be crossing the line is, I think, Kenzie Cool, who invalidated that lap time. So, excuse me, it's going to be Cody King, who's also on the mediums, had a bit of a, almost a slide there, almost sliding. Uh, that car through these complex corners, but across the line, and it's a 35-0. But the good news is they're all on the mediums, so they will be able to do another one. Norton there did a good job on the softs with a 134-3, but Harvey has clearly set a gauntlet down for the rest to follow. His teammate Azures to the line now, and that is a 35-3. And then it is going to be the Alpine of Tankless Cookie. Rolling through the corner now, open up on the last DRS straight. It's a 134.6, uh, definitely a solid representation there from that driver. We've then got the Aston Martin McLaren no, on the out run as a blue dot. I just love the blue dots because oh, and they've got it on that run. So it is going to be Titan who's on the out run. The Red Bull of Kevin Annihilator next to the line. HTR Lee Corona crosses the checkered flag. I'm sure we want a good lap this lap, and they have got a good lap. I'm sure they're pleased with that one. Provisional pole and an absolute stunner of a lap time with a 133.5 purple across the circuit. And I'm sure they're going to be absolutely infused about that one. With that said, I think Sam is the next car to complete a run. It was a 1 minute 3.4 through sector 2, 
And across the line, a very respectable lap time there with a 134.1. And five tenths faster than his teammate Cody King then is going into the pits. And it looks like Mantis is the next car. Oh, she's snorted. I take that back. They're coming in there. And I believe Azure is on a pair of softs but has gone a little slower on their flight. They're going to come into the pit lane. So it is the Mercedes of the other. Paper 2 Racing, Desert Ed, who got a great result out last time on Abu Dhabi, using strategy to come back to the field and finish in a very respectable second play. Started to get the competitive picture for this race. Mantis will come across the line now. It's a 34 2, very good lap time there. Of Titan has invalidated their run, but Arlequin is on a run and is going to come back to the car. Uh, who is next on the run? Crawl here of Kevin Annihilator, just so they're going to crawl into the pit lane, of course. Right, Techless Cookie has invalidated, I think so is coming in. There's nothing from anybody on Twitch chat, which is understandable. So, it is a very hot day in the UK anyway, fairness. I don't blame them for not wanting to respond willingly. Uh, Desert's invalidated, Tips Cookie's invalidated, and the Alpha Tauri of Emma Payne is on a push run. So, Emma Payne has a little bit of uh, bad luck so far in the past few races I've been with you in Tier 2, but hopefully, with the variable of having to use all the compounds, she can turn it around into something special this weekend. At the moment, sits in P11, but it is better than uh, her teammate. And to be fair, it is not you know, last at all. We've still got three drivers who are on a run, one of which is Ben Ebb. So let's go on board with the Williams, who has been impressive this season. I'm sure we'll want another high result, considering our team of Magnetic, who is unable to attend this race, is... Uh, has won a race this season with us. Last time though, the Williams and Bennett did finish down in 8th place in fairness to them, but did take a very good third at the Chinese Grand Prix, and got a very good third at the Australian Grand Prix, and in the sprint, bear in mind they had to come from 13th in qualifying, and in the sprint, from qualifying to the sprint race, and then in the sprint had to climb from 9 to 3rd, so again, very consistent and in the unique point system that Hyperteer Racing has, it is one that will serve you very, very well. As they're coming across the line now, I'm not seeing any purples at the moment. But it's not a bad thing, there are still just under 8 minutes to go. As I say that, Benno just only goes and sets the purple sector 2 on the course. This could be a provisional pole time. Remember, he would need to dip into the 133.4 territory, but invalidated by the Aston of Kenzie Cool, and I'm sure the stewards are going to look into that one, as indeed he did slow down the Williams' flying run, and that run was on for provisional pole. He's cut the corner, lost a bit of advantage there uh, psychologically, and that is not going to be taken very well. I'm sure the stewards may look into that infringement. Meanwhile, Titan, Aston Martin, back into the league after a little bit of a hiatus, is on their run. Had a very good Abu Dhabi, but a little bit of bad luck at the very end. Saw their progress and amazing strategic calls all come undone. So, first of all, through the Maggots Beckett's knockoff. Looks very tidy through there. Seems to be having a bit of a pointier front end to kind of guide the car to where the British driver wants it to go. As you can see, rolling up through the second hill and down to that beautiful, spectacular, scenic shot in qualifying, anyway, given the sunset nature of it all. But around this left hander, oh, a little bit wide there. A little bit of overspin, perhaps. Maybe putting that a little bit too high on the rear toe perhaps, or maybe even having a too low camber, but they are across the first DRS straight of this hot lap, but have managed to keep the car in one piece, 
and given the lap times are well provisioning this is a sector two time at the moment purple so this might be provisional pole position or at least we know without any kind of mess ups it's going to be highly competitive let's see he's rolling around the final corner and again it's just a little bit more narrower but that is okay everyone's driving style's different there's all a little bit of a risky there slide and there's just to catch it roll comes titan through the final corner and it's a very respectable lap time there seemed to lost a little bit in the third sector but good nonetheless of a 134.297 just seven tenths shy of mantis and eight tenths shy of sam but four tenths faster than Tantus, and I'm sure they'll be absolutely pleased with that one, especially considering everything. Meanwhile, Bernard, I'm sure, and Kenzie Cool are in. We did set a lap time. I think the Haas of Armour King has done a more representative run, and it's a 135, so a good run there from the Welsh Dragon of this league as they are now sitting in 10th place come the end of that session and I think one of the Red Bulls is about to go on for a pit lane journey so the next driver out on an actual run is going to be Azure who through everybody's setting times has slid down but maybe decided to just have a safe lap as it looks like the Williams is coming out the pit lane great driver there not uh, slow down the Ferraris uh, flying run of the number 39. Azure uh, sets a decent looking pace through these Magus Beckett's knockoff there. Seeming to go for a bit less over the steer than uh, Titans was due to them letting more of the car glide through as opposed to pointing the car to where they want to go. Then, as we can see here, Azure is breaking now. Let's see if they get the traction down nice. Yes, looks like they're going for a more slightly less oversteery setup. You know, one took a bit more stability, which is a wise thing considering the lottery that is league racing. You never know in this sport ever what's going to happen. Taking a lot of the curve there, but a bit of a wider entry, which is not a bad thing at all. It tightens up the apex. And Azure has not quite set a purpose sector two, but it is up by three tenths. Which, oh, with a bit of a tank slapper, might be able to put them ahead of 8 data and possibly even Armour King, depending on what the Ferrari can do. So that said, they're rolling around the corner now. Let's go through the trio of right handers. And I'm oh, sorry, I just love the undulation over the circuit. Fun fact for you all is this circuit is actually the highest rated as a zero validated there right at the very end. This track in particular is race fans. Uh, rate the race. Uh, favorite circuit, uh, given all the data points. Uh, since 2008, that's every race since then, uh, this track has been consistently the highest performing one in terms of the fans at the time. So clearly it does provide good racing and it's got a lot of corners, okay, pinched from other tracks, but it's the way they comprise them and the natural under and ovulation just makes for a really brilliant racetrack. Put it this way, a flat of, the flat of the track, it's not a guaranteed rule, but typically doesn't work as well. We have got some good news that Magnetic has indeed joined the session, so he will be starting in 17th place on the Williams, so they will be coming in at last place, but the drivers will probably now want to start leaving the pit lane sooner or later, as this will be time to set their final run of qualifying. Speaking of final runs, Mantis has really improved by over four tenths here, and they've not got enough power to do another run, I do not believe, unless they've overfueled the car. The Lithuanian is up into second place. Meanwhile, jumping back to Kenzie Cool, the championship leader getting a bit of a slide on as Bennett has followed them out, so this could be a bit of tensions here. Great pressure for the championship leader. And as we can see, Kenzie is coolly sliding the car through. Here through the left hander. Just got one more to navigate. And they're gonna peel into the pit lane. So obviously wanting to do one more. And Bernard crosses the line instead to go third fastest with a very respectable 133.8. But I think 
that is it for the this qualifying session. Meanwhile, eight data is going to come to the line now, and I think they've gone up by a tenth, which has improved their time, They're not changed their position for now. Meanwhile, we have got the Aston Martin of Titan. This is a bit of a uh, letting cars through. They are on an outlap. Meanwhile, the McLarens are also on an outlap. I think Norton could be given a perhaps. Maybe, who knows? Maybe they planned for this together. Who knows? Zero's on an outlap. And 8 data sadly invalidated in our qualifying run. But Benev has got a little slower. So everybody's just trying to, you know, keep space and give traffic uh, clearance to everybody. So Kenzie Cool still in the pit lane, which is a bit concerning for the championship leader. But they're just about to leave now. And they've got 1 minute 20. Have they left this a little bit too late, I wonder, to set an actual qualifying time? I do wonder. They will start 16th if they fail to set a time. I do apologise, but Magnetic has been able to join. But Magnetic has got themselves out onto the circuit in time. Riding on board with, actually, we've done Titan uh, today. So we'll jump on board with Norton. All part of this season's commentary lineup for tier one and as we can see riding over the crest let's see what he can do through the second sector here i think yeah, titan sensibly getting out of the way of norton very good driving there from the aston martin meanwhile as we can see i wonder if that lap's invalidated yeah naturally i just had to check that it was invalidated for a second there <laughs> As uh, Norton comes to the end of sector two, which will just be after this left hand in here. Oh, and a bit of wheel spin. And that sadly is Norton's qualifying over. Realistically, that cost them a lot of time. And the McLaren, at best, will be in tenth place. Meanwhile, Mantis has found two tenths. I don't think it's two tenths enough, but you never know, there's one final sector to go. You're the one to keep the power down a little bit more and just find that little bit extra. They could take provisional pole position here. Round the final corner comes the Lithuanian driver and they are on little battery going to set a time, but it's three thousand slower actually four depending on which screen you're looking at. But yes, it is not enough. And Kenzie Cool failed to set a lap time. So Kenzie Cool will be starting in 16th place. What could Magnetic do? Drivers are starting to cross the line any moment now. We have got Azure in 14th place. Cody King up to 5th. Emma Payne! Great job there to get up into 6th place from the Alpha Tari. But Magnetic has invalidated their run. And as such, they will be starting at 15th. So two of the championship favourites down the bottom end of the order. We've got Armour King there in 7th place, going up incredibly by a whole 10th. Great job there from the Flying Welshman. Meanwhile, I think there's an Alpine train, which, uh, Alpine Williams hybrid train. And as we can see here, first up will be one of the Alpines. I think it will take this to be. He has improved their time, but not position. Uh, Beneb did not improve. Sam did not improve position wise and all we've got now to wait for is Kevin Annihilator who goes into the pit lane they could have oh they lost their front wing but Harvel in the brink of death sets an absolutely stonking lap time and that is the Ferrari on pole position here at the all compounds uh, tier 2 race, around 9 of the 8th season of Hyper underscore T underscore Racing. Wow, that was an absolute wonder lap that we uh, did not quite get to see. They were the... He, he saved his best till last, quite literally in this Call of Duty Sessions case. And this will be your Ferrari of number 12, Harv... Harv... we who will start in pole position now. Kevin Annihilator in the Red Bull. Will finish second, who uh, lost his front row through some unknown circumstances to the streaming audience. But with that said, in third place will be Mantis. Also, I didn't even realise this, can we draw attention to the fact the top three for this race are separated by 20 thousandths or two tenths of a second. 
all seven of you in the audience, you do not want to tune out of this race because it is going to be... It uh, will be an absolutely incredible uh, weekend of racing. Ben in 4th, Cody King 5th, Emma Payne 6th, Arthur King 7th, Sam W11 8th, RTM Titan 9th, Texas 10th, Desert 11th, Norton 12th, 18th, 13th, Azure 14th, Magnetic 15th, not being able to set a time, Championship Leader, Kenzie Cool in 16th, and Ghostly World in 17th place. We've got a lovely message here. Uh, from Grumpy4435 saying, Marlboro, you may want to make the Xbox Game Party. Everyone in game chat can hear you. It probably doesn't matter too much, though. Well, that's a very good point, so I will do that. If that seems to help the problem, that would be fantastic. I haven't done this in a while, and I wouldn't be surprised if I have botched it up. Thank you so much, Grumpy, for the shout. If the drivers notice... I'm noticing the change. Do you know... I'll be really humble here. I didn't think of that. <laughs> fair play to you, Grumpy. Alright, fair play. I'll put my hands up. I'm not the sharpest tool in the box, as I'm sure some of you probably know. But yeah, fair play to Grumpy. I hope you enjoy the stream regardless, uh, Amigo. I hope you enjoy it. So with that said, Oh, well, hopefully, we've just got to get a safety car for a quiz. And I hope there's more people who are willing to participate in the quiz, because it's not really a quiz if it's just one person. If you don't know, uh, if there is a safety car period and a Marlboro sled is on the stream, then yes, there will be indeed a quiz. Indeed, just for you all, there will be a nice, lovely quiz uh, where you'll have 20 seconds to answer a question connected to the appropriate Grand Prix or any current events within the Formula 1 and Electronic Arts Sports Division uh, space. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, 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 well. We will see, Grumpy. I hope you're wrong. I hope you're wrong. I'm hoping for a nice, clean race with a lot of varied strategy as all drivers will have to use the three compounds of tyre from the Red Bulls to the Williams they'll all have to use the soft tyres which will be marked with the red rubber compound they are the fastest tyre but will degrade the quickest meaning they'll lose their performance the fastest then you have the medium runners which are balanced you've got some tyre life not enough to get to the end of the race but certainly enough to do a majority of their heavy lifting Oh, no need to say that ain't data, I'm sure. With a little bit more, you know, with everybody not only driving as good as they are, and just being that extra bit aware of each other, I'm sure that we will not have a safety car. I'm positive on that one. So then, let's have a look then at the tyres. So, Harvey will start this on the softs. Kevin Nally will start on the softs. Ryan will start on the softs. Ben Ed choosing to start on the mediums. Woody King will start on the softs. Emma Payne will start on the hards, Armour King will start on the softs, Sam will start on the mediums, Titan, interesting, will start on the hards, Tankless Cookie will start on the mediums, Desert 10 will start on the mediums, Norton will start on the softs, Eight Data will start on the mediums, Azure will start on the softs, Magnetic will start on the softs, Kenzie Cool will start on the softs, and Ghostly World there will start on the hard tires. Which one should we get? I think we're going to want the interval and Hey, thank you so much indeed, Pepsky. I agree with your sentiment. For 19 months? 19? Wow. Well done. Thank you so much, Pepsky, for all the contribution and support. Thanks to your Amazon Prime subscription that you have provided to this league. Fun fact for everybody in the audience, Amazon is actually a key partner of Formula 1. I don't think they're on the circuit in particular, but yes, they are a key partner. Thanks to Amazon Web Services. The what I find weird is AWS is all about web hosting services, which is not really something that goes to the consumers. But then again, does anybody need to know what Amazon is? I mean, I think I can make a poll of everybody on Amazon. So, yeah, just a fun fact for the day. But it turns out Amazon 
if you see an AWS billboard or something in this, either in this game, F1 Manager, or in any other uh, Grand Prix weekend throughout the rest of the season, that is why. I know, Grumpy, I was surprised too when I found out what that funny looking symbol is. In fact, the pit stop graphics for the tyre recommended that you just saw within the past few minutes, that is provided courtesy of Amazon Web Services. So, there you go. That is a fun fact for the day. Right, Harvey has lined up, and once Ghosty has brought their hards in the AT04, I believe this is the fourth week. Yes, the AT04. We will get ready and rocking and rolling for this United States Grand Prix. Let's get excited, everybody. It is time for the Texas Grand Prix, or the Texas Grand Prix, I should say. The five lights are going to come on. Everybody's got a not so good camera angle, but regardless, it's lights out and away they rumble. It's a great start for Harvey there. On the soft tyres, using their grip to the fullest. Has everybody made it out safely? Do you know what? Oh, there's a bit of contact there with Armour King and Emma Payne, sadly, in the back. I'm sure I'll be investigated by the stewards. But overall, so far, relatively speaking, so good. Harvey's pulling out a great lead here of about half a tenth, half a second over Kevin Annihilator. Manchester in third. Cody King is in fourth. Beneb is in fifth with Armour King in sixth. Sam is in 7th, hanging on well in those meetings. As you can see, powered by Amazon Web Services, the strategy is supposed to be a one-stop. We know really all the soft, medium and the hard will be used in this race. Tightened down in 8th, the highest of the hard runners is you're in 9th. Oh, Emma Payne getting a bit of a slide, and that's going to give Desert 10 a slight window, but those hearts are naturally a bit less grippy. It will take a few laps to come up to temperature with our Desert 10. A good scrap here with 8 Data and 8 Data getting the move on. Brilliant job, brilliant job, brilliant stuff. Uh, meanwhile, Harvey's already pulled out a second on Kevin Annihilator. I mean, wow, absolutely annihilated him. Speaking of annihilation, Manta's gonna try and move around the inside. Doesn't quite have the temperature in the tyres, or maybe they might have gone for more speed as opposed to aerodynamics and thus were unable to get the move done. But he is stuck in a Red Bull sandwich here. And we've got one British Red Bull in second and a British Red Bull behind in fourth place. Titan has picked up a few second penalty for three for the cutting violations. And the two Red Bulls are out in second and third. Interestingly, Benab has gotten past uh, Sam W. Background at all interesting that Emma Payne seems to be sliding on the hards down the order, sadly for them. Nick Data is holding up a good uh, train there, which I think is just going to create for a lot of amazing entertainment, I'm sure. Right at the front, Harvey has absolutely set sail. D, a fly. Absolutely, Pepsi. Flying off the start was Sam, as we're just going to. He's climbed an incredible one position, but managed to stay there with everybody running soft tyres in front of him. And speaking of soft tyres, Mantis gonna make their position on Kevin and I later around the outside, not even with DRS. And the number 40 is past the number 80 there. Kevin and I later can't quite get the switch back, and Mantis is through. Can they keep that race winning momentum up? We'll have to wait and see. Meanwhile, if we look at the tyre side of things. Where's the right? There we go. As we can see here, a good job by Benob and Sam to keep up with these drivers. But on the oh, that graphics not working. It's a bit bugged on Cody King's end, so it's a bit stuffed. There's nothing more to do about it. But having said that, oh, Benob is getting very close. The RS is enabled. The start on the start finish straight, and he's going to make the move now. Those soft tyres have still got a little bit too much pace at the moment, I believe. As Ghosty's coming into the pit straight away to get rid of those hard tyres, we're going to be putting on something else, but what, I'm not too sure. Meanwhile, the Red Bulls are having a bit of a, kind of a potential brawl down the start finish straight. Medium's already for Ghosty. This could be either the greatest strategy of the world or one that does not Wow, 
Well, that is a good question, uh, Grumpy. There are some drivers stepping in due to low attendances, sadly, across this season, as it indeed it has picked up a time penalty. If you'd like to join the community of racing, all you have to do is go to our, our Twitch page at hyperunderscore.tnscorerisk at the bottom of the screen. Type it in and you'll find our about page. You click on the Discord and it'll take you to the server. Accept that and you'll be welcome. I mean, speaking of family, there's a great move going on the mediums here as Benev has got past Armor King here. Armor King leaving plenty of space. But Benev managing to get a brilliant move done around the outside there, using the DRS back straight and using the corners for an almost double overtake on Kevin Annihilator. We seem to be losing a little bit of ground. Is the co owner and Cody King has sailed into third. Still on the back of DRS and Mantis has managed to close the gap up to Harvey there in the distance. So there might be some action in a couple of laps. But for right now, as we're on lap 4 out of 28 in this Grand Prix, we've got Benno climbing up the hill and almost looking for a move on Cody, who has got a bit of wheel spin. And Benham is going to try around the inside of the Maggots Beckett's knockoff. They give each other plenty of space, a little bit of a track violation. But no track position gain there, so it's all fine in our books. And that has thrown Ben's line a little bit out of shape, but he is within a second and will have another chance with DRS. But he's indirectly helping his teammate, because the more Kevin and Ben fight, that'll give Cody a bigger gap. Uh, to the mind and thus they can just focus on getting into the fight with Mantis, Matova and Harvey. But speaking of fighting, we've got double action going on here as it looks like Sam you knows the mediums are starting to come good on lap number four it seems. Starting to be competitive with the power of the DRS and Sam, W11 is through. Past Armour King. Meanwhile, Benep is still fighting Kevin and Arlene. They've gone all the way through sector two, but a beautiful switch back by the Williams driver. I mean, wow. wow, that was a stunning overtake, but it still continues. Never give it a little bit of room, pushing Ben a little bit off, but Ben fighting and responding well. These two give each other a lot of space, and the Williams is through. Brilliant stuff by Ben and Kevin there, but it's the Williams who beats the Red Bull, and I'm sure that's going to give Sam the confidence he needs to try and make a move now on the co-owner using all the battery they've got. They have gotten past. Those softs are clearly struggling, it seems. But then again, you may have set up the car for the hard tyres. I want to do a very aggressive to the end. Who knows? Who knows? But Mantis Latoya has gotten within an overtaking earshot of Harvey. Meanwhile, further back, is there any kind of action going on? Not too much at the moment. Magnetic, I think, has sadly disconnected and this is not their true form. Kenzie Cool has already come in for the hard tyres, so I don't know whether there was some damage or not. That uh, needs to be investigated, but Kevin has dropped down the order! Oh, dearie me, I wonder if there's some damage on the Red Bull. Or some contact or something. There appears to be not, but there could have been a little bit of an off -sea. And that has dropped the Red Bull from 4th, sorry, 5th, 6th down to ninth place there, sadly for them. As the Alpine is looking to make an overtake and further behind, the Red Bull is trying on Titan. But to no avail just yet. With that said, though, at the front, it is looking very tasty. But... These softs are going to slowly start to go off, so I don't think we're going to get much action now from that duo uh, in the short run. But meanwhile, further behind, Titan on the hards has spent a couple of laps getting them up to temperature, but now the Aston Martin has. They are just cruising up the order, whereas nearly everybody else has gone for the softs at the start due to the grip they offer. Kevin Annihilator looks like they're coming into the pit lane, and the Aston Martin is getting the move done. Good move there from Titan, great run from Azure to give the appropriate amount of space, but it's the Aston Martin who comes out on top of this one, tries to get the switcheroo, it does the Ferrari, but it's not enough, and Titan moves themselves into 7th place. So, Kevin and Anita going on to a hard pair of tyres, as is Norton, and serving a penalty of some description. Ah, oh, sorry, they had a glitch, my bad. Um, the game where it just bugged itself up for a minute. 
Well, Baku will certainly be interesting and eventful. It's one of the most unpredictable chaotic races, and you can find out how that race goes next Monday at 7 p.m. Power of DRS. A lot of battery, I'm sure. They have absolutely been pushing, and I think, as we can see by the flat lashing red light, and that Ferrari is licking its lips, seeing the red lights flash at the rear wing of the McLaren under that dark traced McLaren, as now the Ferrari has got the power to respond. Meanwhile, Beneb is keeping pace. Very respectably there on the mediums and in front of Cody King, so those softs are starting to struggle. And Cody is in. The Red Bull is oh, and Armor King is around. Not sure why. There's no damage to the car, but it looks like it's definitely thrown them off. And it might be time to come off the soft tyres. They're starting to lose pace. Cody King is choosing to go the medium tyres. As me, Armor King, we don't know. Uh, but uh, after all the shuffling around, Mantis leads from Harvey, then it is Ben Ebb with a three second time penalty in third, Sam on fourth, and Titan in fifth. You've got Mantis and Harvey in the lead on the softs, the medium leaders are Ben Ebb and Sam. These tires are going to start to go off, but Titan can still keep pushing on those hards, and I wonder if they'll be able to potentially catch up to this little pack here of what could become very soon four cars, ladies and gentlemen. It could be an absolute action packed race. Thank you to all six of you who are still watching this wonderful stream. As uh, we've seen Desmond in the background get past Azure, but Azure picked up a great fight there. Through the beginning of the start, finish straight, and Mantis holds on to the lead. Further back, though, uh, yeah, Azure has absolutely sailed past Desa there on the soft, which is surprising considering how old they are. Uh, but fair play. Okay, guess the job done. Guess the job done, though a lot of battery has been consumed just by a quick glance at the wheel and a lot of concentration has been needed for Desert, as you can see with that determined power slide of overspin there on the mediums, which they've stuck with the highest of the pit stop drivers is uh, King, who will be getting past the ghost of magnetic uh, presence. With that said, Mantis Latoyev is in. One of the race contenders is in. 8 data has got a 3 second time penalty. What tyres are they going to go on to? It is the white wall tyres. So they're going to take the Google Chrome rimmed hards for quite a while this race. They are the tyre that can do the most amount of distance. So the question is, what tyre are they going to do? He's got a second gap to Beneb, but Beneb's on Imperial Mediums, which are, are in the prime, they're in their Imperial phase, but will soon slow start to march into the wonders of history regarding the grip. As, uh, Again, these tyres are going to slowly lose their fade, and you have also got as well Titan, who can't see last lap, but could be gaining the background on Sam. Uh, almost, but not quite for Harvey, those softs are starting to struggle. Maybe they want to try and go for a really aggressive medium stint, perhaps. We'll just have to wait and see. Quickly flicking it to the leader, you can see that the moment Mantis would be coming up ahead in the pit lane, uh, should... Uh, Harvey decide to pit right now at the end of lap 8 of this United States Grand Prix here at the Circuit of Americas for Tier 2 at Hyper Tier Racing. Got Cody King there, make it a good move on the medium tyres. Again, that is natural. This rubber does have more grip after all in the hards. And as such, makes a lot of sense to beam through the order. I don't think Mantis is going to put too much of a fight up there. That is the Red Bull into the net race lead. So there we are. Harvey is in. Hasn't got a speeding penalty, which is good stuff. And Beneb has taken the provisional lead, but the Ferrari is on to the hard tyres now. So the white walls are on the Scuderia car, and it will be for quite a long time into this race. How long? I'm not too sure, but Kota is famous for munching up the tyres, and as you can see now, Yes, that has put him just in front of Mantis, but they're going to be side by side. Those hearts are going to need a few laps to come up to temperature, but Mantis Latoiva soars ahead. 
ever so much by an inch as Norton suddenly spun in the background as that put Mantis ahead of Harvey but on the worn compound meanwhile Cody King has actually sailed in front of them and cleared a DRS window so obviously using this as their patient as their push period but will be a little bit slower later on in the race as now they're going to be fighting to get past these two cars of Tankless Cookie who's on old medium tyres and Emma Payne who has done a good job coming back through the order after a lap one shenanigans and they are through but Harvey has fought back with the power of the DRS and just try for a dive to the inside Harvey closes the door and that's Harvey into the net P2 as things stand but remember everybody will have to pit at least one more time most likely and that is a beautiful move by Cody King going around the outside of Emma Payne and getting past Tankless Cookie during the DRS straight. Again, brilliant driving by the Red Bull, but they need to use those medium tyres efficiently because they will be going off at some point later in the race where the hards will be able to catch up. Not to mention the two race leaders in Harvey, who's got past Tankless Cookie, and Mantis. That's get past uh, Tankless. Uh, sooner or later. Anyway. Uh, will end up as Emma Payne goes to the outside, doesn't put too much of a fight up. Wise move, these two are in completely different races as Mantis Latoiva does a brilliant move here around the inside. Oh, what a beautiful camera angle. Brilliant driving from Mantis. Fair play to Tankless, did a great job con defending considering how old those hards are. Sam for the time penalty. And now Mantis is going to go for another, but the more they're stuck behind a back marker, the less it's going to help them out. Mantis is going to try and probably put the ERS down, but they have got the drag reduction system. They've just gone past the DRS line. Emma Payne is still in front. This is time that Harvey is pulling away. He's out of the DRS window, and I believe has more battery than the Lithuanian driver. So this could be game changing in the race. And as we can see by the flashing red light, Mantis is putting that pedal to the metal, but it's not quite enough. It is just good clean racing from those two and a great defense there by Emma Payne. So, Cody King's next target is Desert 10. We've also got Titan, who's still competitive on nine lap hards. And then we've got Sam and Ben who Those mediums are surely going to struggle sooner or later, but those hards can go quite a long way into the race. So it's about timing it really for Titan and for Emma Payne as well. But there's a 10 here. Next on the chopping block still staying out. So I think the general consensus among the drivers is that there is a lot more pace in the mediums. And as we can see here, I thought it was going to be. Excuse me. A little overtake there, but not quite as Cody King is trying to get past badly because they've got the advantage and Harvey's already caught up to the back of Cody King there. This could be a little bit of a spa. Uh, 90, 2000, 99, 2000 overtake, Mika Hakkinen getting past Zonta and Schumacher at the same time as Harvey's going to go around the outside for this corner fighting the provisional race leader in Cody King goes a little bit off the track but doesn't gain the position Cody King is going to have to deal with this is not going to put too much of a fight there three wide through the main straight here at Cota Dessa backs out wisely and Harvey gets the position necessary sorry for the voice crack and is up into fourth place it's up into an incredible fourth place in this race. Mantis though, has got a little bit of time to catch up after missing out and Deza will be next on their target list. So then they'll be catching up to Titan, who's still got quite a lot of pace to give. But Ben Ebb has proven the mediums are a little bit too much now, so they're going to come in as it is Sam W11 after 10 loyal laps on the tyres, so what are they going to do? Because they could do a lot of kooky things, Titan takes the net race lead to be expected, so a pair of hards on the Williams, and a pair of hards on the LP. so clearly going for a much more aggressive final stint, there is a spin from 8 data in the background sadly, but incredibly, after 12 laps we managed to keep all runners running, which is absolutely impressive, a great move there by Kevin Annihilator on the outside of Ben Obu's on cold hard tyres, 
do always take about one to three laps depending on the track to warm up at. Probably one at this circuit given the conditions and the high tyre where 8 did get another 8 3 second time penalty. And Titan is in the lead, but how long will the hards go for him? That is the good question we know. It's going to be more than 11, judging by the graphic. Uh, just uh, right of the thing. And 8 date has retired in the pit lane. That shouldn't be a safety car. Unlucky there from the British driver in the Alfa Romeo. Harvey is up the back of him though. There is a, a pretty big pace advantage between 3 lap hards versus 11 lap hards. But those hards should still have a few more laps left. They are the slowest, sure. They are the most durable. So let's see what happens. Ooh, well, Magnetic, I don't think it is uh, still ghosted. So I don't think it's played by the race rules sadly. Due to a disconnection and not being able to rejoin. But Titan is in, so those hards are only doing one more lap than the mediums apparently, so in comes Titan, good job not to get a penalty, Harvey moves into the race lead, let's see what is going on the number 93, Aston Martin. Indeed, still on sorter, but they're disconnected at uh, Grumpy, so I wouldn't worry too much, but I've yet to rejoin. But with that said, RTM Titan has gone to the medium tyres so they're gonna get faster as this race goes on in terms of net tyre life as we can see Armour King has gotten past as has Kenzie Cool, the championship leader up into seventh place on nine lap hards so they may have to run a medium stint or stretch those hards out for quite a while but at the front of the pack it's Hardy on four lap hards with a 2.7 lap cushion to Cody King who's on six lap mediums, will have an estimated four laps to go on this tyre and unfortunately the pace is not going to be there initially in terms of purely tyre speaking they did start on the softs and will have to move on to the pair of hards to finish out the race so they're going to need a little miracle to maybe do a hards and then possibly switch back to mediums again I mean it can happen if you have a safety car at the right time just saying. Uh, Mantis, meanwhile, is in third, slowly catching up. They've got a better tyre life with one lap over the hards. And then we've got Bennett on fresh hards uh, in front of Kevin Annihilator there in fifth place with Sam W11 looking to get past. The lap difference is clear. Uh, seven lap hards into an approximate 12 lap lifespan versus one lap hards. I think it is a little noticeable. Which one may have the pace at this stage, not to say overall, but at this stage in the race. Incredibly, Sam's trying to move around the outside of Kevin and I to great respect between these two. A nice bit of overtaking. Dad's got a three second time penalty. And that sees Sam move up into fifth place for this race. Right, there's a bit of action at the back as Magnetic is still disconnected. They are not race but incredibly the softs could do 13 laps according to the AI so there you go um, with that said though and with Payne it has got past into 13th as a result and oh actually there's an Aston Martin fight here between Titan and Kenzie Kenzie on hards that are practically dead in all but all but official terms whilst Titan He's on the brand new mediums trying to snoop around the outside. Kenzie closing the door. Titan getting a good switcheroo. Has got the DRS. Kenzie does not. And sails past the Aston Martin driver. And that puts number 93 ahead of number 25 at the moment. Both will have one lap to go, but I will stop. But Titan has gone from the hards to the mediums, so their pace will get faster as the race goes on. And meanwhile, Harvey has actually extended the lead incredibly by over five seconds to Cody King and Mantis in this fight for second here. So it is clear those mediums are starting to go off, as we can see by the power slide there from mm, from Cody King as there is a pit stop going on with Armour King who will be moving on to another pair of tyres perhaps maybe doing 
the mediums, perhaps? Or soft? Who knows? Let's see. It's going to be a pair of mediums for the Welsh Dragon. And that puts them down into just about 14th place there. World. Meanwhile, at the front end of the field, uh, we've got Mantis Latoya there on a pair of hards, looking poised to get past the medium of Cody King, and through the outside goes the McLaren, sensible clean driving between these two, and that sees the Lithuanian up into second. Now, we'll need to hunt down, but it's got a little bit wide, picked up some marbles, open for Cody but it wasn't wide enough and such Mantis is up into second place of this United States Grand Prix with the all compounds uh, feature added to this race as it looks like Tankless Cookie has got double overtaken and the Alpha Tari from the paint running a little bit wide there as he was able to catch it the car and oh a little bit close there from Tankless but Emma Payne managing to hold on that he have got four lap mediums after all, so the pace at the moment should be on the side of the Alfa Tari driver. And Azure in the Ferrari is a little bit on the defensive with seven lap hards. And as you can see in the background, the gap is still about five tenths, but Benev on much newer hards has been able to impressively in the background keep up with this group, slowly catch up. It's almost within DRS range. This could be a fight from second down to fourth here. And some jeopardy on the pony border as Ghostly Balls were a little bit wide and that has opened the door for Armor King to get past the 14th place. Meanwhile, I think an Aston Martin is struggling with Kenzie Cool, the championship leader on 12 lap hards. Uh, for the record, as they are fighting Desert Ten, we'll check it afterwards, but I believe they started on the mediums, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be very well mistaken, and thus had to switch early due to some conflict, but doing that and adding another stop does add to the overall time of the race, as Desert Ten looks to take advantage of this fact on much fresher hards with the DRS, Kenzie giving a squeeze to the Mercedes, and the Mercedes has got the grip, Kenzie closes the door, but the Aston Martin does keep in front with the Mercedes at touching distance to the Aston Martin there. And for now, I'm sure they'll look at, they could look into that one as Mantis is in. So, started on the hard, soft sorry, move to the hards, it'll be an end of race stint to the medium compound of tyres. So, let's see what these two can do. No safety cars have come out yet. Incredibly, I am thoroughly impressed and proud of everybody uh, for not bringing out a single one. But Mantas is hoping to gain some pace back to that five second lead. But Harvey could really call the shots as Mantas has had a five second penalty for crossing the exit line uh, prematurely as Armour King goes faster than them all. So, at the moment, it looks like Harvey's to lose. Meanwhile, thanks to Mantis making a pit stop, Beneb has climbed back to their favourite number position, number three, which I think is the number on their car of the Williams. As we can see now, they're going to have a little bit more pace uh, than Cody Kane, whose mediums are a little bit worn down now, and the Williams Beneb should be able to move themselves up into the second position, or one above. Oh, there it is. Apologies. Benab is up into P number two of this race, but we'll have to stop for one more compact tire before the end of this Grand Prix. Cody King is now down to third and may need to consider pitting onto a pair of hards, but it's a matter of when. It really is a matter of when, as it could be now. And speaking of now, Harvey's going to come in for that pair of medium tires. Let's see what Mantis can do. The gap is decreasing. Mantis is coming around the right-hander through the first left-hander into the pit entry. Bit nice and clean, that is the Lithuanian. Harvey is just leaving the pit lane now. He's putting it up to speed soon. And that is the Ferrari in front, but stuck behind some traffic here in the form of Titan on Warn, but not completely gone mediums. 
and we'll have to box for another pair of softs. So this could slow down here. The advantage for the net race lead. And as we can see, it is currently... Actually, I'll leave the penalty graphic on, as there is a spin for Norton, sadly, in the background there. But Harvey has managed to keep the pace on Titan, who has got six seconds of penalties. The Ferrari can take their time. They've got a three-second advantage over the rest of the top eight at the moment as they stand. Let's see what they can do. Coming through the hill as they're about to make an overtake through the inside of the court. Uh, pretty good driving that as Harvey is up into the place there, setting the purple second second. Wow, that is dedication for the cause. But to be fair, we're on brand new mediums and end of race fuel, so it's not a surprise. The gap has somewhat shrunk, and Titan is not able to pace. Actually, they're just about holding on. But it's not quite enough, I don't believe, and as such, RV's next ticket item is going to be the two hard runners of Sam and Ben Ebb. Both who started on the Indians, both who went to the hards, and now are going to have to come in for softs in approximately five laps time. Both have played their strategies out to a T this race, but fair play to everybody for managing to keep this race absolutely clean. Speaking of clean moves, there you go, a smooth one there via Cody King, but Dazatan tries the switcheroo, but... Cody plays the Uno reverse card on that switcheroo and keeps on to P6 here. And Dazza not quite having the momentum through the Maggots Beckett's knockoff. As such, is in seventh place for now. Oh, Payne. A very good job, actually. There in eighth place. Kevin Annihilator in ninth. And we've got Tankless in tenth with Arm King pushing to get past. Tankless is on worn hards. Arm King's on. Imperial medium, so let's see here what can happen for the number 13 driver. Will they make a move down the DRS straight? I wonder. I think so. As Azure gets past the AI of Magnetic in the background, and as we can see, Tankless is making it hard for the Welsh Dragon, but they have got DRS, used a lot of power and slipstream, gone to the outside, and that is the Haas through into this all combat race. Meanwhile, it's looking pretty quiet actually. For once, it's not looking uh, hectic and eclectic. Uh, magnetic, if you're wondering why they're disobeying the rules, they've not been able to reconnect, so the AI has taken place, which doesn't know of the strategy in question. But that said, Ghostly World is in 15th and Norton is in 16th at the moment. So, we will jump on board. I think the closest gap at the moment. Wow, everybody's all spaced out by a second. I I just want to take a moment to say thank you all so much. All seven of you have been here for the past hour and 16 minutes and counting. We've just got eight laps to go here of this United States Grand Prix. Ah, that's very good question, uh, Pepsky. So, penalty-wise, we've got Ben Ebb on... <laughs> Get back to Ghosty in a second now. Ben is on three seconds. Sam is on three seconds. Ghosty's retired in the pit lane, so no safety car. As Harvey uh, moves up into second place, they don't have any penalties. We've got Sam on three seconds. Titan with six seconds, I'm afraid. Mantis with five. Cody King with three. Desert with three. Emma Payne with three. Kevin with zero. Armor King with zero. Tank was Cookie with zero. Kenzie with three. Azure uh, in six. And Norton on none at the moment with Ink Data and uh, Ghostly World retiring in the pit lane. So, let's see what's going to happen here. We've got Ben Ebb who's struggling on those hards against Harvey, who, to be fair, has strategically played this race absolutely perfectly. I do say so myself. They're going to come up the beautiful turn one with that very high hill. And they've made the move done. And I think this could be Grand Prix over. Benno puts a fight. Doesn't have the tyre traction to make it work as such. It will be Harvey who 
is into the lead. Let's see if Ben Ebb can get a bit of slipstream. Kevin Annihilator has got past uh, Emma Payne as Emma looks like she'll be fitting for a new pair of tyres. We'll find out what they are in just a moment. Along with Tetris Cookie, it's a pair of softs, brave to stretch it out for that long. But to be fair, they do have the grip to do it. So let's see if they can claw back some time and some advantage. Meanwhile, Ben Ebb is got, hasn't even got the DRS. Harvey has yeah, played this beautifully. What could I say? And they are, well, this could be a bit of a domination fest and, well, well deserved. Well deserved, if that's the case. There's a yellow flag. Norton's retired on the circuit and a safety car has come out. All the hard work there by Harvey. And me saying this race was going to be boring has been completely thrown out the window. And a magical safety car comes out. What type of safety car flavour? We don't know. But surely, with seven laps to go, everyone's going to pit for softs now. Surely, if they've got a pair spare, apart from Emma and Tankless who are already on softs, yep, that is no surprise. Everybody's going to be boxing in on a beautiful pair of softs. You've got to be careful of that pit lane. You don't want to be damaging the car. Let's see here. Yep. Yep, I knew this would happen. Lovely. You love to see it. And everybody completed the rules, or most people did. The Titan, this is beautiful because they are completing the challenge with the right tyre at the right time. Because remember, they get to go on a pair of softs. So this is just working out in their favour, actually. They've got a free pit stop under all this. They've saved about 10 seconds to the overall race time, which I'm sure they'll appreciate a lot. That's, yeah, everyone's softs. Do I need to say at this point, nearly everybody will probably come in for a pair of softs at this stage. I would be shocked if you came in now and didn't go for a softs quite frankly. So, those mediums could do it, it would be a significant piece of advantage. Emma's going to stay out, obviously, and so is Tankless, given the fact both just pitted for softs, we pretty sure. Again, Emma Payne charging up the pit lane, and is able to get a couple of positions, mainly in the form of the championship leader, Kenzie Cool and Azure, and Tankless is pitting though, to probably get all that five second penalty, I suspect. A racing going on here. Armor King gets past Kevin Annihilator. Okay then. So, it is time for a United States Grand Prix quiz, everybody. This means you have got 20 seconds to type in the answer to any question I decide to spit out. So, first question, just to make sure you're all awake. Who won the 2022 United States Grand Prix here at the Circuit of the Americas? Your 20 seconds starts now. Who won last year's United States Grand Prix? Who won last year's United States Grand Prix? If you're struggling to figure out a way, it was Max Verstappen, Grumpy. Indeed, you got the first point. Uh, Pepsky, it, it was caused by Norton uh, retiring, sadly, as um, I won't mention any more. But Norton did retire, and uh, that's why the safety car was caused. Next question, then, just to make sure all of you are in the room on this quiz. Uh, how many laps will be conducted at the 2023 United States how many laps will the real drivers uh, do around the Circuit of the Americas in this year's Grand Prix? How many laps will the 2023 Grand Prix have starting now? Oh, Ghosty, you're so close. Just pick one of the numbers. You're really close. You are really close to taking a point here with this quiz. Remember, yes, Grumpy got the... Answer down first. It's 56. Grumpy's on fire with this quiz. It is 2-0 to Grumpy at the moment. Everybody else needs to step up their game. Thank you all 10 of you. While the safety car period is going, we're having a little quiz here. Any questions to do with the United States Grand Prix will be mentioned. So then, here's a little fun fact for you. Name me. Let's find a good question. Okay. When was, since COVID-19, so since 2021, which team has been the only team to win the United States Grand Prix since 
post-COVID-19 pandemic, which Formula 1 team has only won the United States Grand Prix? Your 20 second start now. Also, uh, well done, Ghosty. You got you typed in the answer first. It is indeed Red Bull winning it in 2021 and 2022. So then, next question. How many venues has the United States Grand Prix undergone so far? The entire history of F1, the last question before the safety car comes in. How many circuits have been used at the United States Grand Prix? Your time starts now and finishes when the safety car comes in. How many circuits has the USA circuit? No, it's uh, no. No, it's not three. It's not three different venues in total. It's not three. Go steep but keep try. Oh, and a little bit more grumpy. Yeah, tracks. So just thinking of the tracks, each different track, not suppose the quantity of races, but how many different venues have hosted the United States Grand Prix. While that question is being answered then, we are about to go, go, go for the United States Grand Prix. It's a final lap dash. Nearly everybody is on a pair of softs here, and I think Veneb is surely going to be pounced at the opportunity. Harvey has dominated so far for the majority of this race. It is indeed five, Grumpy. You have won today's quiz by three to one. That honourable mention goes to Ghosty as well for getting a lot of answers right and for participating in the and second as well, getting one question right. With that said, Harvey is in the lead with Bennett in second. It looks like Sam is on the attack here, trying to get past Bennett. Attack. It's going to be up a three-second time penalty. And it looks like... Uh, Beneb can't keep up at the moment. Let's see here. Is Harvey deploying that battery? Not so much, but nor is Beneb interesting here. So these two not feeling the need, but Beneb's going to have to do something to keep up. Because remember, it, it, you've got to be within by lap 27. So three laps. Sorry, 26, I should say. By this straight, you've got to be within one second to have the DRS. Any moves going on further down the field? I think Kevin Annihilator is looking for a nice move here. On Armour King, nice and smooth between some of the finest racers. Uh, let's see here, no other action. Harvey set a purple. This gives him more sector two. It is uh, Marlborough Sled Ghosty who is hosting this stream. If I sound like Matthew, thank you. I'm sure Matthew has a wonderful voice. With that said, we've got Beneb in second place here outside of the DRS window. And even Than with another three second time penalty. And that has given Harvey a lot of confidence. But he can't get complacent here. He needs to keep on pushing. And I'm sure Beneb is not going to give up this easily. This is the closest he has realistically been all race. He's taking the win. And Cody and Tankless here have come into the pits again. So I assume they must have sustained some sort of contact. Otherwise, this wouldn't have been uh, an issue for them in the first place. Beneb is in second place. Sam is in third at the moment with uh, Titan in fourth. And to be fair, this has absolutely worked in their favour. They are right on the tail for a potential podium as uh, to avenge what happened in the UAE last time out. Let's see, no action just yet, but I can confirm Harvey has pulled away out of the DRS window. Ah, that's not true, Matthew. That's not true. Just because you're a northerner doesn't mean your voice isn't as good. Everyone's got different voices. Everyone has different, wonderful voices. And it's a different stroke for a different folk, as they would say. So I'm sure it is wonderful, and that's a subjective matter, because everyone's different. I'm sure someone is absolutely hating my voice right now. I can think of a few reasons why. But regardless, Beneb is unfortunately not quite within Harvey's range, as DRS will be coming online this lap. That means if you're within one second of the car ahead, the little letterbox flap will open. And oh, actually there's a bit of a slide there from Mantis, and they've not had the most ideal of restarts. 
to Desertan and actually Titan's going for a beautiful lunge. Has left it a bit too wide. Sam's closed the door there. And that has seen the Alpine move into third place. Azure's retired. There won't be a safety car, I don't believe. There is only three laps to go, and it's in the pit lane retiring as well. So the drivers are starting to drop like flies, it seems, towards the second half of this Grand Prix. But to be fair, it's predominantly clean. We've only had one safety car and no serious on-track collision between two drivers. I'm thoroughly stunned. Could change as the tensions are rising and it's more about being on the attack in this final stage of the race. But also a strategic one because you've got to decide when to deploy that battery of yours because it's very hard to recharge. It's not impossible, you could recharge at the pointy corner. I call it the sawfish corner. Uh, as you can see in the top right corner of the track map. Or you could recharge the corner where these two have just exited. There's a yellow flag ahead. It is the Ferrari retiring of the zero out the race. Commiserations to them. Uh, as we can see here, as Titan's got a three second time penalty. I'd love to set orderly all the penalties, but there's just too much action going on at this stage. It's the final few laps. It looks like Sam is in the most comfortable position for the second place. Titan has got 12 seconds, Beneb's got 6, and Sam has got 3. So Sam doesn't really need to make an overtake and could even drop back and let Titan through and still come home to take second. But let's be honest, that's not how racing drivers work. That's not how racing works altogether. So with that said, it looks like Aston Martin is going for the move. Is the number 93 trying to see... There's no room to make any moves, though they're very keen. Oh, and that's no, not quite a success. Could be another underfloor damage. Or certainly a loss of confidence, but they've just got to refocus, re-aim, and I'm sure they'll be able to make an opportunity. This is crucially, they're putting Sam on the defensive, which is exactly what Beto needs. If he can get Sam out of the DRS window, he might, very slim chance, of holding onto this P2 by merit deck. He has to do a three-second gap. The gap that Harvey has built to him in order to beat Sam on the road with all the penalties standing, as you can see on the screen. Meanwhile, further behind, the action going in here. Mantis and Armour King having a great scrap here as the Welsh Dragon soars their way through into sixth place. Good, clean, action packed racing between two veterans of this community. Mantis looking for the opportunity. Light, getting the move done just there. The Annihilator is in touch and distance on this group, as is our championship leader, Kenzie Cool. But there's a bit of action going on here as Mantis is desperate, weaving those softs all around us now. Picked up a three second time penalty. Some great news for Kevin Annihilator and Armour King, who don't have a single penalty. And could, if I quickly switch over to the leader graphic, Armour King actually could jump Deza. Could jump Titan, not quite Sam, but could even get Beneb, and thus could take a net P3 here, with Kevin and Arlie to take a net P4 or 5, so it is looking pretty rosy, but for one driver who this race has, oh, actually we'll do the, the new driver ceremony thing at the last sector, we need to make sure the overtaking action is finished first as Titan and Sam desperately slug this one out. Both want to have bragging rights, both want to get third by merit. And it's not quite going to be an overtake just yet. Further down the order, there is potentially some action we can come to in a moment, but this is the last chance for this group. Beno looks like they got to second on the road. Sam is going to defend. Titan's going for the dive bomb. Nice and clean stuff. Not too much contact, though it was a little bit there, but no damage done as Deza and Armour King there get a little bit too close for comfort. Bit of hairy dive bombs down that corner, I've seen. But the one driver who hasn't had a hairy race at all, hasn't put a hair out of place, is Harvey. Has absolutely timed it, used the right tyres at the right time, made the perfect calls, and has optimised this beautifully. It's Harvey, who not just wins, but dominates this United States Grand Prix and finishes it in amazing style there. Benev crosses the line for Sam, will take second for now. I won't say the final order yet, let's see what happens. So, Sam did indeed, somehow, despite all that defending, get second place. 
Armour King in third, Bannock fourth, Kevin Annihilator up to fifth, Mantis down in sixth, Desert in seventh, Ember Payne in eighth, Kenzie in ninth, and Tyson down in tenth. I'm sure to be absolutely gutted with that one, considering how high they're up in the race. Cody eleventh, Magnetic hasn't really been around, so they're not going to count. So Tankless finished in twelfth place. Indeed, Pepsky, that was a fantastic drive from Harvey. If I do say so myself. This race is drop indeed. Very good stuff from Santa Paula. Easy is apparently the driver of the day. There are your podium three, as we can see, it's all British sequester. And now will come the champagne, a chance to see those beautiful Ferrari suits. Wow, they were made for the Italian Grand Prix. So, there we go. Sorry if the music was a little bit too quiet. A great job, indeed, by all drivers. I gotta say, Massive respect to everybody for managing to keep it relatively clean, and we didn't have, maybe bar the final lap, a, or I don't think about the race, a serious collision between two drivers with all the tyre changes. Great job to everybody out there, and I know it's only the sign of better things to come. So for this United States Grand Prix, Harvey wins from Sam Ben Arbor King, then Ben Ed, Kevin Lewis, Mantis, Latoya, Dazza, Emma Penn, Kenzie Cool, RTM Tide, and Cody King Magnetic. Thanks for as your with the DNF as being as your Norton, Ghosty World, and a Data. Here are all the incidents. I've been Marlboro. You probably won't see me next week on the microphone. I will be back though for the round number 11 and or maybe the season funnel, depending on what happens. But you'll be watching High Punt Score Tier Racing. Please follow us. If you want to subscribe, that would be absolutely generous. We have achieved our primary goal of 210 followers. We'd like to push for more. If we can get to 420 followers by the end of this game cycle, that would be fantastic. It's free to do, and it would go a long way to helping out the community. Right then, everybody, I've been Marlboro. Have a good day, good afternoon, and good evening.